I would like to formally welcome Chris Wagner to the Power BI Community Times in South Florida to talk about, uh, I would say, a not much discussed and very relevant topic we are calling versioning and CI CD, continuous integration, continuous de delivery. And Chris is a wonderful analytics professional, uh, tons of experience. He's also very active in the community. I must highlight again the outstanding creative skills Chris has. If you haven't yet, check out his content on his website, his YouTube channel. You should go there. And Chris, if you are ready, um, I know if you have a presentation for this or if you want to do a discussion, but. Uh, I, I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Awesome. Sitting down, everyone went to the bathroom, everyone's got a drink, everyone's ready for this because apparently I only have 30 minutes and I've got 30 hours of content. So we've got a lot we've got to cover here. So I hope you're you're sitting down and you're ready. The recording's on, yes? Yes, we are ready. Awesome. We're gonna get we're gonna get up and going because I don't want to miss a beat of this because I want to get to talking to you guys. All right. Uh again, Chris Wagner, uh Analytics Rebel, Data God, Power BI Boss, White Rabbit. I uh, work at Rockwell Automation. I, I lead up their senior finance data and analytics space. Founder Kratos BI. Follow me on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and always on my website. All right, let's get into why are we talking about this stuff, all right? Now, when you start working in Power BI, often, 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 it's one or two people, right? They start working, they pull up this tool, they they hear about this this thing that everyone's starting to work with. They download it from from uh, this, you know, from from Microsoft's shop, and they they load it, they start working with it, and they love it, right? And it's great. And um, you know, then they add another person, and before you know it, that starts to grow and grow and grow. And that's been the the story of of Power BI over the last ten years. We've just seen this exponential growth. And the challenge we have, though, is that with one or two people, Power BI development's no problem, piece of cake, real easy to do. The issue we have, though, is that that one or two people has turned into a horde of people that are starting to work and develop. And the questions become, OK, did you know, is the right version that I'm supposed to be working on sales dashboard Chris V 38.7 a blue do not use, but really use? Why is that file name so long? That's awful. But uh, or is it Sarah Michelle Geller's sales report, you know, like which one of these reports are we supposed to be using? Which one are we supposed to be, you know, is right? You know, I've got measures, I've got stuff all over the place. How do I manage and work with this stuff? Well, that's why we're starting to talk about this, right? Um, when we talk about CICD, you know, or, so, so that's why we have version control, right? It's to deal with all this jumbo and all this mess, right? When we talk about CICD, this is this is the concept that you're continuously able to go out, deploy, make updates and changes to the environment, to the code that you're working on. The idea being that you can constantly be deploying stuff. Gone are the days of, OK, hey, it's five o'clock on Friday. Now we can begin our deployment. That's going to, you know, we've got these scripts that are going to start to run until like 3 a.m. At 3 a.m., we're all going to hop on a conference call. We're going to talk through the status of the updates on, on the code runs. And like you're going to run all weekend with those like off and on stops and starts. And then all of a sudden you got like eight hours of you head down work, right? Like, and then that's just the deployment, right? Gone, right? Like we're we we are eliminating that um, in our new agile framework and how we work and deliver um, by focusing in on being able to continuously deliver. That means, uh, especially for a lot of business people, that maybe you're not a hardcore IT developer who's been through that stuff, right? You've only heard about IT doing stuff over the weekends, so and you come in on Monday and it's all foobard, right? I know, uh, I've been there, right? Um, or it's just different, you know. Today, we're going to be deploying stuff in a constant, ongoing basis, right? How we do it in IT is we manage things using a development environment, a testing environment, and a production environment. These concepts are going to be some of the things that we're going to be talking about as part of our CI, CD um, uh, environments and deployments, because while lots of people in Power BI just live in the fire that is production, right? You know, like, hey, if something goes, if you break something, well, you better fix it because it's, it, it's up and running, right? Today, because it's so easy to take Power BI and just have it on your mobile device, have it in your CEO's hands, have it in your Salesforce hands, like 
those things going down is is now it has more impact and importance on it, right? So we need to be able to be out there deploying things 24 seven. And frankly, if you're running in an agile environment at all, you have to have these capabilities, okay? So this is why we're doing these things. These are the basics of it, all right? Now, this is not straightforward and easy, okay? When we talk about uh, managing DevOps and CI/CD and version control, this is much this is much more difficult in the data world than it is in a software world, right? Google, biggest software company out there on the planet, they only have 96 terabytes of code that they manage, right? They on the data side though, they've got 1,200 petabytes of data. That's 1.2 million terabytes of data, right? So that's that's like 12,000 times the amount of data that they have as they do code, right? So the, the practices and processes that they use to manage code have to be very, very different when you start to get into data. And let me, let me illustrate for you, right? So that can be really hard to think of, right? So this one dumbbell, because this, what I showed you here, this is not relative, this is not relatively correct, okay? This one dumbbell, if this was 100 terabytes, this is the amount of data that Google is, is managing times two, right? Like that's the amount that we're talking about. So as we start to work in business intelligence and analytics, we have to keep this in mind that we are we are not just managing code, but we're managing code and data, okay? Both of these things are important, so it's gonna be important and it's gonna drive our, 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 our strategy here, okay? I'm not gonna get too deep into this, but I wanna make sure people are familiar with some of these concepts when it comes to code management, because this fits into our CI, CD processes, all right? So um, when we talk about managing code, often we start to talk about using a tool called Git, um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, but you're basically, your, your main set of master code that's running in, in production is considered your master branch, okay? Anytime you, you go to, to work on some additional features, you're gonna take a copy of that code and you're gonna move that onto your, your laptop, your desktop, whatever it is, right? You're gonna take it from production so you can work on it. So you can add new tables, new dimensions, new models, that type of a thing, right? As you're working on that though, things can happen, right? That production code can suddenly encounter an issue. Uh, you know, th all of a sudden there's a problem in production that you have, there a change has to be made, right? So a uh, fix gets deployed, that gets rolled out into production, and then that gets merged back into the, pr you know, that production code that's up and running inside the system. Now, I think you can kind of see this, the issue here. You're gonna continue working on that feature and make some changes to it, but now you've got this this gap here. There's a dis difference between what it is you're working on delivering and the code that's running inside of production, okay? Remember, this is just code. This starts to get more challenging around data, but we're gonna get into that in a second, okay? Once you finish your, your development, you're gonna do a final merge. It's gonna bring all that data that or the changes that you've made in with the code that's running in production, and then you're gonna release that out, okay? Um, so when we're talking about managing code though, we're talking about you know creating code, fee, you know, adding in features, doing hot fixes, doing rollbacks. What do you do when code that goes out wasn't right? Like that's wrong, right? Like it doesn't work, it's a problem, you gotta roll that back, right? You gotta merge them together, you gotta deal with conflicts and, and issues, right? So if in this if, if in this version you made a change in here that was changed down here, it's something different. What do you do at this point, right? Like, you know, you have to figure out how you're gonna resolve that conflict. Is your change gonna move forward that you developed as part of a feature branch? Or is the change that went in as a hot fix gonna continue to move forward? That's something that you're gonna continuously have to judge and work through and sort out, okay? But here's where it starts to get different when we talk about data ops versus DevOps, okay? Data ops, you also have to be thinking about the state of your data before your code rolls out and after, right? So if you roll a code that does a lot of extract, transform, and load, that data is gonna be in a different state after you get done with your 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 road and or your loads and your runs. What do you do if that state of that data doesn't pass your quality tests? 
well, how do you roll it back? What changes do you start to implement, right? So these are all things that we start to talk about inside the space. We're gonna try to keep this as simple as possible though, because this stuff can get complex, okay? Inside of uh, uh, Azure, and when you talk about large scale enterprise deployments, and you talk about data assets and managing code across all of these things, you're gonna start to talk about uh, traditional CI CD processes. And well, frankly, there's probably going to be better people to answer these uh, uh, and talk to you about these. I recommend some YouTube channels that are out there. You know, I, I'm not your guy to go deep into these these solutions. I can talk about them and I can plan a project on them, but I'm not your guy. All right. We're going to be talking about the Power BI Challenge, though, because this is where people will get tripped up. OK, Power BI was designed in an agile fashion and it was, you know, it was designed with an enterprise scope in mind, right? So how could you take an individual developer and get it so it could be deployed and managed by the enterprise? Um, but it was also designed in an agile fashion. So everything inside of the Power BI report or the PBIX file is all kind of crammed into one big bucket or one big blob. So where you might be, where you might want to have all sorts of change control management and code control man things, there are some limitations inside of the Power BI. So don't worry about it though. You know who knows how to handle it? This guy, this guy knows how to take care of this. All right, so I'm gonna show you how we do that, all right? So uh, inside Power BI, we're gonna do some, we're gonna start to follow some best practices on how we work and operate with our models and with our reports, okay? We're gonna start to break apart for instead of having one big blob where it's just like this huge Power BI file that we manage and we have to sweat and deal with, we're gonna to start to break these, these pieces apart into different components. We're gonna talk about breaking things out into data flows so that we load and bring our data into the system. We're then going to load and manage them inside of data marts so that we can uh, distribute them, we can use them in multiple models. We'll start to add in views. We'll start to put in all sorts of additional controls inside of our data mart. We'll have data sets that we manage our analytical models. So why have five copies of a model when you can have one that doesn't make sense or 500 copies, which I've seen, right? Where, okay, now I got to update a measure. Now I got to run five, 500 different places. Nuts to that. We're not going to do it. We're only going to do it a singular time. All right. And then how do we manage reports? All right. Uh, on top of that, we're also going to take advantage where we can, because we should always be as lazy as possible. There's way too much work to do to not be as lazy, lazy as you possibly can be. OK, so where we can, we're also going to leverage Power BI pipelines and the various workspace management controls. OK. And this is just a, uh, if you follow me on Twitter today, uh, th this, when I was putting together this, this presentation here, I was just, I, 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 so if you don't know, this is the icon for a Power BI data set. Not this. I don't know why it is. I, I disagree. It, it, like you could call it a database, but it's not your classical database, right? It's an analytical model, right? It's a cube, right? Just use it. It's a cube, right? Uh, so I share that with you. All right. Now, when we talk about Power BI data flows, who's familiar with the data flow? Anyone? Anyone? This anyone? Guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. <laughs> All right. Good. 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 All right. Um, data flows are what you what you do to bring your data into your models. So when you go into Power BI and go add data, right? Um, uh, basically, you're bringing data into your model. Well, a data flow allows you to individually do those inside of the service. That means instead of loading them into many different models and having to run that load and extract a whole bunch of times, you only have to do it one time, right? And I don't know about you, again, I wanna be lazy, okay? These data flows, uh, you can export them into JSON files, so you can back them up, you could store them in VS Code, and then you can start to manage those inside of Git. If you're a one person shop, maybe that's a bit too much, but I'm gonna quick show you how to do the, all that stuff, all right? Cause uh, I don't like to, uh, I don't like to just not do demo. So, okay, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, okay. All right, is this, uh, let me zoom in this, maybe I need to make this bigger. All right, so in, uh, I'll log into my Power BI uh, service. I go into my workspaces. Now, you're gonna notice that I run a very clean environment here, right? I do a number of things to make sure that's easy for me to manage. I have my data marts workspace 
where everything that I manage for data marts is available for me inside of here. First thing I do is I have all of my data flows and yes, data flows, not just a data mart with data flows in it. I have my data flows separated from my data mart. That's for troubleshooting and um, issue resolutions and um, uh, varying schedules, okay? But once I've built these all out, and I'm happy with these. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna click on this little ellipses. I'm gonna hit export. This is gonna export and it's gonna dump into a file here. And I've actually already done a whole, oh, I deleted them. All right, awesome. Um, I'm I'm going to just, once I've got these done, I'm gonna export these all out, right? So very easy to do, right? I just export them uh, into a code locker. Uh, what that allows me to do is then go in and start to manage these. So if you're at all familiar with Visual Studio or Git, which is a code repository tool, uh, you can go in and you can define Okay, so here's my downloads. Here's all my the items that I'm managing. I now have, here is my Git folder that I've defined inside of my uh, inside of my system. And you'll apologize, I blew this away for the demo and now I screwed up my Git repository. So it's gonna be a little wonky, but you know, I think we'll be all right. So I'm gonna then take all of these items that I just downloaded. I'm going to drop these into my Git workflow. And then I'm gonna hop over into Visual Studio and I'm gonna see I've got all of these new items that I need to check in. I'm going to go ahead and check these in. Why is it not working? Like I said, I screwed up my, my GitHub right before this thing called. So that, that always happens, but I get to check it in and then I can manage my, my code and I can manage my deployments. This, this ensures that if I'm making any changes to these things, I can always roll back, right? So because if I just go into my dim customer here, I load this puppy in, I go to edit, and let's say I do something stupid, right? Um, because, you know, I've, well, I, I'm just frankly, I, I'm known for doing stupid things, right? I accidentally delete all of these things out of there, right? I save and close and, oh no, now I've screwed up my dim customer, right? Um, it's all, screwed up I get you know I refresh now and now my dim customer table is foobar right because it's now just has my my table names inside here now it's very easy for me to go in go back into oh my god that was my dim customer table. yeah dim customer <laughs> uh, I go into my dim customer I know it's bad I delete it I blow it away I go to new I go to uh I could then Restore by going to new da data flows. No, I don't want a data marked. I'm going to create a data flow. And then I can uh, import the model. I can go to my Git repository. Dim customer, open it. And I can import this in, into my system. I'll need to edit the credentials. Oh, I've already granted access. That's great. Not mean to do that. Oops. Oh, I didn't delete that one. Oh, okay. Delete. Uh, edit. Oh, you, you you see how you can edit the, the content of, a, or you can edit this and go in and make changes to it, right? Um, uh, but yes, now I, I've, I've basically, I've restored it and I can continue to, to run and operate and I haven't lost what I'm doing inside of my data flows, okay? Again, this becomes incredibly important when I have like a horde of people working and managing my stuff, right? The number of people who will accidentally blow through these things will just, will kill you, right? So. Now, when we talk about Power BI data marts, I know you're all saying to yourself, Chris, how do I do CI CD with Power BI data marts? Aha, uh -huh. you don't, it's not GA, don't worry, don't do that. It's not, it's not right for that, but okay. Tabular editor, let's talk about what do we do with our, our models, okay? 
Remember, our models inside of Power BI Desktop are good, but there's some challenges with those. Okay, um, it's locked inside of our uh, it's locked inside of uh, our Power BI file. What the heck are we going to do with this stuff? Uh, this is where we're going to come in and we're going to use this. This is a premium only feature, so I do want to call that out. But I want to simply go in and I want to grab that Power BI model that is uh, out in my data sets. Right, so I go to my data sets, I go to settings, I go to premium, I grab my connector right here. I go in, I go to file, and I go to, oh, I go to connect to my model. I paste in the value right there, I click OK, I authenticate. And here's where magic's coming. Are you guys buckled in? This is exciting, you're about to miss something if you're not paying attention. I'm gonna select the model, right? Now. Here's something clever that we're now going to do with this. Oh, I cannot wait. This is this is exciting. All right, I am going to go under File and Preferences. I am going to make sure that the serialization of my file structure is set up like this. So please, I'm going to just take a screenshot of this. I'm going to plunk this in the chat so you guys can refer to that later because that is how you want this to be set up. Hit cancel there. Uh, and now I'm going to go to file and I'm going to say save to folder. Okay. What this is going to do is it's going to save all of my fi my BIM, fi BIM file into a whole series of files that I'm now going to be able to manage my, my model all separately instead of as a singular blob file. So I'm going to, uh, so this is my folder, right? Business Intelligence, it's my Git. Business intelligence data sets. I'm going to say that's my folder. I'm going to hit save. And when I go back out there and I go and take a look at uh, that folder. Oh, did I close it? When I go out to that folder, I can now see that um, inside of my data sets, I've, all of these things are now broken out inside of here. So I can go in and I can see all of the different components and files that are available to me. And I can file close. Open from file. I could say data set, I could say open. Wait. Data set. Open. Open. Oh, okay. Come on now. What did I do wrong? Yeah, open from file. Oh my gosh, the whole like. Oh, this is not, this is working against me today. Uh, uh, boy, the demo gods, I screwed something up in my system here. Why, 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 why? Oh, okay. So I can, I can open up my model and I can start to manage from within this file structure. What that allows me to do is now I can have many people working because if I go over to Visual Studio again, I can then go in and see all of those files are now available to me inside of Visual Studio. I can check these into my locker and I can start to work with these universally with a whole bunch of people. But wait, there's more. We're gonna do a little bit more than that at this point in time. Uh, I can also go in and I highly recommend you check out, where is it? Michael Kowalski over at Elegant BI. Did I close his main page? Son of a, I did. Oh no, this is it. Um, uh, Michael Kowalski over at Elegant BI actually has this incredible thing called the master mini model process that you can start to manage your models by. There, it takes a code out here called uh, the mini model builder. You can go out here, grab this. Basically what it ends up doing is it leverages tabular editor to create a whole bunch of uh, 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 scripts that allows you to define uh, perspectives. So here is my model. I can go in and I go custom actions, mini model builder. I can run this guy, it'll run it. Come on, run it. I can go in and I can create a new mini model. I'll define it. Common nomenclature is that we, we use Mini model, pers it, it, this will use perspectives to manage this. I use a dollar sign for, for those perspectives. I call it dollar sign uh, demo. And for this dollar sign demo, we're gonna really look at our fact, reseller sales, reseller and date 
that's all that's going to be inside of that. Oh, first I save, and then I go to next. And reseller, back to reseller sales. I make sure that those are selected. Oh, no, not hide and hide out. Okay, I just run through, I go through, I make sure I hit save at each one. Oh, no. <sighs> and when I get to the end, you don't actually have to hit end on every one of these. I hit this, I hit finish. We'll now see that there's a perspective called demo that is out here. Now, if I filter down to my demo, we will see all of the tables that are now, that didn't quite work right. <laughs> We'll see all of the demo item tables are there. Should be less than that, but okay, whatever. Um, and I then run my custom action scripts, which creates a smaller model. What this basically will do is it will, oh, actually, I'm going back to that one. Retail, no, reseller sales. Oh, well, uh, we're gonna use the uh, demo again. What this will do, and this you have to be very careful about this, this will strip out and delete all of the other tables that are inside of your model when you run it. So always, always make sure you've already checked and committed your code into Git when you do this, but you then run it. And now I've stripped out all of my tables. So these are the tables I had in demo, but if I go to all objects, you see it doesn't change. So I now have a mini model that's available. I can then go to deploy. I can choose what a uh, database I'm going to deploy it to. I could call this uh, mini model. Hit next, deploy, deploy, and this will then deploy out into the surface. So now I have my model that I'm running and I'm working together with a whole bunch of people working and contributing to it. So I can make one code change to DAX, one code change to add a table, right? But then I can publish it into multiple places if I needed to have different versions or different teams I want to share things out. Or let's say my model was just getting super big, right? Now I can have little models and I, I, I'm still managing it in one place. Now make sure you don't save here because it'll end up saving out to the service, but now you can just continue to run and operate there, okay? Now, that is how we start working inside of Tabular Editor to start to manage these scripts and, and code changes, okay? Now, here comes, the, here comes the downer, right? When it comes to Power BI reports, well, I got you covered, all right? Uh, so um, Power BI reports are a big blob. They are hard to manage with, but once we've stripped out our data flows, once we've stripped out our data model, now we have what are called skinny reports, and this becomes much, 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 much simpler to manage, okay? Now, I am not going to be the guy who, who's like, uh, I didn't create this tooling, right? I didn't create Git or any of that stuff either, right? Um, but the, the person who we can really thank for this stuff are uh, the guys over at Power BI Tips, specifically Steve Campbell and Anthony Escobardo. Um, I don't know if you guys watch any of their stuff or Power BI uh, Tips stuff, um, but they're fantastic, especially their, um, oh my gosh, Explicit Measures podcast, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7.30 a.m. Central Time. It's a fantastic uh, show. Please, if you have time, do dial in. But they've got a great option for you out at Power BI Tips. They've got a whole bunch of videos out here that will run through how you can download and install this stuff. So I'm gonna share this inside of the chat here because it should be very easy to use. There you go. All right, so this is available for you. So you can start to manage and, and load this stuff. This is gonna take advantage of Power BI, or I'm sorry, it's gonna take advantage of SharePoint. It's going to take advantage of Power Apps. It's going to take advantage of Power Automate. It's all going to use um, mostly free capabilities that I'm aware of. Um, so I'm going to quick show you how that's all set up and configured. Okay. So uh, first things first is you set up after you download their file. That's a, that's a big thing you first do is you set up a repository um, where you're going to be saving all of your files. I've uploaded all of my files that I'm going to be managing here. You then go over into Power Apps. You go into Power Apps and import in their solution that they've built out. This is the Power BI uh, version control. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go down to the settings screen. And it's it, when you first initialize it and set it up, 
there's going to be all these angry red arrows all over here. When you when you when it shows up, you're going to actually click on this and it'll ask you to configure something. And basically, it's going to say connected to this table. OK, so it's very easy to do. All right. Um, nothing, easy, nothing hard, right? Once you have this in place, then then you can start to manage your Power BI reports so that you can start to check things out, check things in when you're done working on them. So in the situation where there was Chris's horribly ugly, awful report name, and then there was Sarah's horribly awful report name. Now we get away from that. Now we just have the sales report, okay? So I'm gonna hit play on this to kind of give you a little demo of this, okay? So I've got these various reports out here, the Data God Model Autodocs, the Data God Model V2 and Kratos BI Fiscal. I'm gonna go ahead and click on check reports out because I'm gonna be working on some of them. So I'm gonna be working on uh, uh, the fiscal, no, I'm not because I actually, oh my God, I have business things I can't show you guys. Holy cow. All right, I'm a legit business. Do you know I do consulting on the side? It's a thing I do. Um, uh, but uh, I'm gonna check this out. I almost gave away my revenue. So uh, you, you can't see that. Uh, I'm gonna check this model out. This takes a little bit of time, especially it takes more time if you have larger files. So if you, if you haven't already stripped the, if you haven't stripped the model out, it could take a little while for it to, to go. But as you can see, it's now finished. I click on OK and I come back over here and I hit refresh. And I'm going to see that uh, one of these one of these documents is now checked out to me. Right. And it's up and running. So I'm I have this checked out. I can go in. I can make changes to this. I can do what I need to do. And then when I get done with it, I can go over here. I can go to check this in. This recognizes what reports I have, what items I have checked out to myself. I, I check, I go ahead, I wanna check this back in. I'm gonna make some comments on this one. Uh, demo for Florida. Boy, can I type today? I'm gonna ha go ahead and click check in reports. Once that gets done, boom, that's done. I can go back here. I can hit refresh and then I can go in and I can always go and I can look at the version history on it. And I can see the, oh, come on now. Well, first off, you can see that it's it's no longer there, but you can see all the different versions that existed when it was checked out or when it was modified, the sizes, when it was put in and you can then do a restore to it, right? So if you ever needed to uh, restore to a various version, you could do that. Restoring to that version will just move it up in your list of reports that, that's out there and it's available. So if let's say you restore to an old version and then you made a mistake and you had to go back and like, no, that's there's good stuff in there, you could totally do that too, but you could do that all inside of the existing report and you don't have any uh you don't have to worry about any of that stuff okay so super easy to use uh really accessible did i not share that link with you I did right uh all available over at power bi tips uh if, if you guys are looking for a great way to manage your code this is a fantastic way to manage your 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 content inside of power bi okay because that blob is a pain in the butt all right, um, but we're not done. We're gonna start talking about, but we also wanna quickly hit on the Power BI data flows. Do we have time? What time is it? How long have we been talking? Okay, I'm okay. I'm still gonna go. I don't care what you think. All right, um, <laughs> where's my demo? I have a demo. Okay, um, I closed it. Here we go. Uh, so I go into my pipelines. Oh no, I, I did get rid of it okay so this is even better all right i want to create a pipeline i want to do i want to do a pipeline for uh my data mart actually i can't do it for my data mart because data, databases aren't supported but i want to set it up for my data flows right so this is something that we're going to do when it comes to my data flows is i'm going to create a pipeline for this one i'm going to call this my data flow pipeline i'm going to go ahead and click on create on this this is my production environment. This is also a premium feature, just an FYI. And in order to, to create this, you have to have the ability to create premium um, premium workspaces. So if there are any blocks in your organization that would prevent this, this isn't gonna let you, you're not gonna be able to create that, okay? So um, 
Uh, we're going to go ahead. We're gonna, this is going to be a production workspace. Uh, yep, it's got items that are unsupported. So these uh, goals and um, uh, data sets are, are not supported. So, OK, that's fine. Uh, we can go ahead and do that. Once this is in, I can then go to this ellipses and I can go deploy to a previous stage. Yeah, I know there's stuff that's not there. It'll deploy. It'll move it backwards in time. It'll move it backwards in time. It'll move it backwards. One of the things I do want you to know when it comes to adding in these additional layers is that it does add a degree of management and process to what you're doing, right? So many of you are comfortable living in the fire because, hey, you only had one Excel spreadsheet before, so why should you have you know more than one Power BI report, right? So I get it, right? Uh, I was living in the fire for a long time too. Um, so don't go to this until this is something that's necessary for what you're working on, right? When your team has grown to a certain capacity, when you suddenly have a, a wide range in the skill levels that you're working with, right? Like, you know, like uh, I've worked with teams that were, you know, hey, it was the five of them for 15 years and they they were solid, right? And then four of them retired and they were, you know, uh, it was people who was fresh out of college came in to replace them. Very smart people, but they didn't know they didn't have 20 years of experience working with this stuff. So it became a real challenge, right? Like, oh my gosh, who updated the Excel spreadsheet? You don't do it on Tuesdays. That has to be updated on Wednesdays, right? Um, uh, so well, all I'm saying is is be careful and choose the time when you go in and take this on because of the additional overhead that does come with it. Okay. So, oh my gosh, why are you taking so long? Well, okay. Uh, what's going to end up happening, uh, I'm going to paint this picture for you, is it's going to migrate all of these items back into this data flow area. It will then end up moving. All, once that's done, I would then do the same thing about deploying to a previous stage. Once all these pieces are done, the, the lowest most stage uh, that I have is where I'm going to do all of my development and changes, right? So I would do my changes and deployments. Uh, there we go. Okay. All right, so so this is done. Now I could choose to work and operate and test and then only deploy to production, right? You see, I don't necessarily have to have a dev. Maybe I just add two layers, right? So maybe three is too much. Maybe two is just right. You know, think about the three three bears, right? Figure out what's what what's just right for you, okay? Use that and and get that up and going, okay? As you get that in place, um, you know, that's going to really get you up running. You're going to be able to do data flows. You can't do data marts. Uh, you can do data sets and reports. You can't do the goals or the metric stuff. That's something that that's why that failed because of that. The data set there was linked to a data mart, so it doesn't work like that. But um, uh, you can get these in place. OK, now uh, next steps. You could do this. All right, you could do this. Don't 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 see these things and be like, oh, this is too much. I can't handle it. You got this, all right? So some things for you to do. Download tabular editor. I got that at SQLBI.com. Download VS Code. Um, that's from Microsoft. Get the Git plugin. That's a VS Code store. Uh, check out the master model co code over at Elegant BI, and then go over to Power BI Tips and download the Power BI version control, okay? And then try each and every one of these out. Try exporting the JSON. Log it into Git. Do a change, right? Do the same thing for data for data sets. Uh, you know, do the same thing with the reports. You know, and for the pipelines, create a pipeline, test it out. Do this yourself. Let it not work, right? Be okay with it not working, and then work to resolve on what what was the problem, right? Why didn't it work? Figure out how to make these things work, and then you decide how much of this you want to take on, right? So try it out. Run through the whole thing. Run through the gambit, and say to yourself. Hey, does this fit in with my development practices? Does this make sense, right? Because you may find that some pieces of this really do and you know surprise you and others like, oh, I thought this was gonna be super easy and great. I can go ahead and do this, okay? Um, so uh, those are the next steps and items. But with that, we're just gonna, we're, we're gonna wrap this one up. What, what questions do you guys have for me? Um, yeah, I, I think I kept that to a tight 30. I gotta be with 30 there, yeah? Or was I an hour or something? Yeah, that's great. Nice that was it. great. Okay. That was great, Chris. I have a, I have a question for you. So yeah, uh, on the pipelines, 
Uh huh. So I'm wondering. So, in in the workspace, you know, area within service, when you're is terms of like a best practice. Do you see people creating workspaces for dev, UAT, production, separate workspaces for those, or is all of that managed through like the pipeline thing that you just showed? Um, good question. So, oh, look at that. You can now assign a workspace. So uh, when this first rolled out, you could only define your dev environment and then it pushed it all the way uh, forward. So a lot of people like had a production environment and then it became their dev environment that they pushed. It, it was, so that was a blocker. People couldn't use it. Then they made it so that you could define which environment. And then, so you, like you saw, right? Like I had production, I pushed it back. That worked really well. Um, but part of that was, like I said, you have to be able to create the, the workspace yourself. Now, I guess you can assign a workspace to it. So that's kind of cool. So, you, you know, if you work in an organization where you don't have the ability to create your own workspaces and whatnot, uh, you can actually, inside the tool, it allows you to do that. So that's awesome. That's a, that's a brand new feature. Great question. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, uh, one thing, uh, uh, this, th this, uh, the part of our, the, the effective data storytelling, I was trying to work on, do something on each time and as part of that visualization uh i actually had created a report uh, that I, you know i think is really important to touch on when we talk about these types of things and that's the quality checks right uh making sure that data that you're loading into the service matches your source systems and that you know if you have qual any potential quality issues inside of your report okay so this quality check goes in and tests to see if I have any load issues or if I have any problems. And in fact, you can actually see, I actually have a problem here, right? Like I have a problem in my loads in 2022. There's some differences that have, have shown up there, right? And now at a high level, at a, at a macro level, the differences, you know, net out, because I think something's being filtered here. Um, they net out, so at a whole level, it's it's an issue. But the problem is if I go in and look at this, it's, it's actually in the, um, uh, the issue is in the uh, partitioning and the refreshing something. I broke something in there. No, I purposely did that. Now, what I did then on top of that is I created a scorecard that tracks these metrics that are inside my report that they can then report on and we can graph out and see if there's any quality issues. Because that scorecard is a measure I, that I can put into any Power BI report, that means that this me this metrics, this scorecard can be added to all of my Power BI reports. And so if anyone needs to, you know, see if there's any issues or any problems in that, any Power BI report, they can just go to that one known scorecard where they could see that we track everything and that, hey, look, Chris is actually tracking and makes comments on these things. Like, hang on, like this has been off for a while. Uh oh, I got to create a new check in. There's nothing on here. Uh, you know, hey, come on, Luchador. Yeah, Power BI Luchador. Hey, Luchador. Ah, why are you doing that? Luchador. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Luchador. <laughs> check this out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Power BI Luchador, get on this, right? So now Power BI Luchador has an alert. Um, he saw that there was an issue in, in the data loads. He can go in and, and, and sort this stuff out because this is something that I have exposed to my users and this is in the reports. It's not inside the, the, the scorecard, right? Other users could go in and make similar comments and say, hey, is there something going on with this? And we can create a dialogue right inside the service. So uh, just a, a thing that I we ran into the other day that. Uh, tied into that I thought was important. So a quick touch on that. Awesome. You, you have a question from Dajana. Mm -hmm. It's asking if there is any difference if you're using Power BI report server. Oh, so Power BI report server. So you're working on prem. Good news um, is uh, yes, all of, um, oh no, did I close that? I am, this is, um, so you can totally use this app 
with the files for Power BI Report Server, right? So, uh, you know, these are just PBIX files. So your PBIX files that you run on the Power BI Report Server, you could store these in SharePoint. You can manage these with the Power Apps. You could totally do that that way as well. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, frankly, you could use this for any type of files, right? Like, I could totally have managed all of my uh, my my data flows inside of here too. Now that I think about it, right? Chris, I have a question regarding employee turnover. How would that impact an organization building reports? And maybe this will help also. Don't you think? Uh, I'm I'm sorry, I, I missed. Employee turnover. Uh, oh yeah, employee turnover. Yeah, hundred percent. Right, like, uh, you know, now you have all of the reports checked in. You can see where they all are. You can go in and at a glance see if anyone's working on something and something has been checked out. At the very least, you can you know go in and unlock and get the last one out there. Right. So yeah, this is this is a big deal when it comes to employee turnover and um you know, people coming and going, especially in, in with our workforces these days, right? Like people move fast, um, you know, keeping, you know, a good version control is really important with that, 100%. Chris, one thing, like it's, it's kind of related to this, but do you, so I'm thinking about, you know, what you just said, you've got employee turnover, maybe you have contractors, a lot of contractor turnover with, with people working on this stuff. So, if they set, if they publish a report and they schedule a refresh under their credentials mm -hmm. and they leave, that data set's going to fail, right? So do you recommend using like a service account to get around, you know, versus individual credentials to schedule refreshes so you can avoid that scenario? 100% you should be using service accounts. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. For those things. Yes, yeah. I just thought I would mention because that actually recently bit bit us. So, yeah, <laughs> lesson learned. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that's anything that's important for your production environment should be done in a service account. Um, yeah. You know, if you're running in an ad hoc um, or smaller team or smaller group, it's fine without it. But you should definitely be creating service accounts. Uh, you will find that often service accounts have to have licenses assigned to them and whatnot. But you know, honestly, that's the cost of doing business, right? Like. It's, Stuff is not, you know, we're not talking a thousand dollars a seat, right? We're talking ten bucks a month or twenty bucks a month, right? So, yeah. Thanks. Yep. Great. What other questions do you guys have? Hey, Chris, it's Greg. Yeah. Oh, hey, Greg. How the heck are hey, you? Hey, good, good, good. Um, so, awesome. uh, yeah, no. Um, this is, you know, would you believe I didn't know about the even though I'm hanging out with those guys all the time, the, the version control thing. Yeah, so, I, really? Yeah, so I guess, you know, I think about, uh, uh, and do you compare contrast the, uh, like the commercial versions with the, you know, this this thing that uh, the Power BI Tips group uh, has got uh, cooking. So I, I know that there's what, there's uh, Power BI Sentinel has, you know, got some DevOps stuff. And I didn't, uh, I guess, uh, is there more stuff happening in, in Tabular Editor 3 with uh, DevOps that you can't do with um, TE2? Yeah, um, so Tabular 3 has, or will have, either has or will have Git integrated directly into it. Um, uh, uh, so there's some advantages there, like you saw me having to juggle two diff you know, different things and bounce around. So that's kind of a pain in the neck. Once it's integrated, um, and I apologize, I haven't looked at it in a little while. Um, uh, but I believe it is because that was I heard we had a whole session on it. So unless people were just talking out of their butt, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So there's that capability there. Honestly, I am not familiar with Power BI Sentinel. Maybe I'll have to have them on my live stream to do an evaluation of that tool. Uh, I do I just, are there to, any, are there like, to have uh, live streams every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Central Time to check out new tools like this. So please check in. Yeah, I didn't. If there's just you know kind of uh, established version control uh, commercial stuff that you've kicked the tires on, or I have not. Honestly, we're using this because we have such a we have such a large number of developers that we have to look for 
the simplest, easiest, lightest weight solutions that have no cost to them. Um, because our enterprise teams are, are at, the enterprise teams have started to use even Git for their Power BI uh, files, uh, at least in some of our areas. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to have stripped out all the data because Git doesn't like to have tons of data move around. Goes back into that whole data ops thing. So, would that be something with the Power Apps piece? Is there much? I have done. I mean, just to be honest, I've done almost next to nothing with Power Apps. So, I guess as I look at this thing, it's scaring me a little bit. Should it? Oh my gosh, no! I mean, watch okay. the videos I, I I shared the the link on. Uh, I mean, it is. Uh, I mean, honestly, I saw them do the demo, and I I set this up yesterday afternoon. And I was just like, oh yeah, I, I've seen people do this. I can set this up in 20 minutes. I set it up for my personal account in 20 minutes. Like, it's 100% something you can do without any any sweat, any concern. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Well, I think you just yeah. uh, made a sale then. So. Well, it's, it's free. So I know, <laughs> but until like word gets out, everybody's using it. Those guys are going to figure out a way to charge us, right? Right. Right. Someday. <laughs> make, make Mike and those guys rich. Uh, all right. What other questions job, do we Chris. have? I know you had some some bugs there. Some the demo guys bit you, but it was uh, awesome. I learned a ton, uh, man. Oh, good, 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 good. Awesome. Is there another question? I thought questions or experiences. What are you guys using? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is anyone else using anything other than like uh, RBI Sentinel? Is anyone using that? I haven't. Is I've not used Sentinel. I'm just curious. Does anybody use DevOps to do any of this? The things that we've like CI, CD. I, I know that some of this can be done with DevOps as well, but just curious if anybody's used it. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look for some resources on that too. We just started. Well, isn't it, Chris? Isn't that part of like the Dev? Oh. Isn't that playing a role in like this? Yes, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, that would be part of what you'd do is you'd build out your DevOps pipelines. I thought you were looking for yeah. someone else to come out and say, yes, you're doing that stuff. So, um, yes, you would build out your repo. As I said, I tried to reset everything so that I could show you clean stuff, and then it just all crapped out of me. So, I totally screwed myself for this one. Okay, um, so but you did it here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You could set up you know, repos and you manage your commits and pushes and all of that good stuff right inside of there. And you can even build out, you know, full on pipelines to, you know, especially on your models side, you can build out, you know, really complex um, uh, pipelines. And honestly, if you're, if you do go and attempt that master mini model thing that I was, I was talking about, 100% plan to build out pipelines to manage that. Okay. You, you know, that whole like, hey, be careful, you don't want to save this over this um, is a legit thing to be very concerned about. And you want to have a robot in your pipelines that does all of that culling and does all those shifting of different things out there for that. So um, so um, are you doing that at Rockwell? <laughs> if you can answer that question with the mini mini. Yes, yes. Yep, we are. We are doing that right now. Sweet. Yes, it uh, increases our productivity significantly and allows for sharing of things that people would be normally concerned about, right? Because like, hey, I own this metric, I own this measure, I don't want people to change, you know, like sales is sales, like you can't just make up your own definition of sales, right? This is this is the number, right? That has to be propagated out to the leaders and management. So, you know, now that we use our master mini model, now it becomes much easier for that distribution. Anyone else, anything else to share? Anyone that is new to this, is it all clear to you? How do you feel about it? This is like a level 10 on the complexity side. Um, so hopefully this, this method will be a simpler one that anyone could kind of grasp on and take advantage of, right? Um, it is relatively easy. These are straightforward tools that like, I mean, 
you have Power BI, most likely you have SharePoint, right? Like you have Teams in SharePoint, right? So you can you know, use the free Power app to get that up and running. So hopefully that's not stone too far. Hi, um, I'm, I'm pretty new to Power BI and mm -hmm. I have a small team at, at work. I'm the only one and I, I self-taught everything that I know about it. So, um, and I'm the only one who knows Power BI at all so far. So <laughs> sure. now I'm thinking, you know, after watching your, your demo and so forth that, you know, it's put, you know, it's possible that, you know, if I'm the only one who's doing anything with it, maybe I don't need this so much. I just know when I'm saving files myself over, you know, like I was laughing at the beginning when you were talking about all those weird names, like my names get long because like I want to just know when I'm looking at it, what I did and what that is. Like my names are super long, <laughs> but like as long as I'm the only one, maybe it doesn't, you know, maybe it's not as big of a, a, a so deal. The, the thing, Tracy, I'm going to recommend you still do this. Yeah, is um, because you can track the version history in here. You can go in and see the different flavors that you have for them, right? Um, uh, so you can you can test out and see different things here, right? So if you ever screw something up, because one of the biggest challenges I had when I uh, you know when I was doing and managing this is I was working and building in a model, and then um, one of the things that I've actually seen on way too many people is. Uh, ha happen to is that model just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and more complex and then suddenly one day it's so large that it crashes um, and all of a sudden you can't recover right you have issues and and yeah. uh, right you corrupt the file something happens right like um, and then if you don't have a version that you can fall back on it can become really challenging for you to recover right and yeah, uh, saving the names and whatnot is is a way to manage it. It hundred percent is, but by purposely, you know, doing your checkouts and check ins, that just builds a good strong muscle that you are checking these things. That you you know you you're tracking them. You're purposely fully making changes and you're making comments on them so that when you go back yeah. and look, you know your 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 history isn't as as sad as this, right? Well, let me just yeah. It definitely would be helpful to, for it to be more clean, you know, yeah. and clear. Yep. yep. Plus, if you have a singular file name to publish, uh, that's going to create a singular report that you, when you share to other people out in the service, yeah, that URL won't change. Right? Okay. So you, yeah. You that's won't have, true. Yeah. Yeah. You won't have to keep sending like, oh, and here's this month's report, right? You can just have that report out in the service and you can know that it's there and you can know that you can count on it, right? Yeah, that's true. Because I haven't published it for people yet. I'm just trying to make sure like I, you know, I, I get more ducks in a row before I do that. But yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, I got you there. Yeah. Yeah, this is helpful. Hopefully. No, we're trying to help. Tracy, have you encountered data flows yet? Um, No, I don't think so. Because if I have to ask myself the question, then probably not. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, data flows, uh, and really, they're they're relatively simple. It's you know, when you load it when you load a table into Power BI, and let me see if I cannot log in and show you. No. Uh, when you load a table into Power BI, it's the same. It's the exact same tool, right? So if you were to, if I was to go into my uh, data flow environment and, and create a new data flow. Um, uh, you would see as I go through the steps, it looks exactly the same as creating a, a, a table inside of your model, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. these are all the same things are there. And in fact, one of the one of the biggest tips I'll give you is if you take inside the advanced editor, oh man, I wish I. Um, oh, I can open this one. Inside the advanced editor, um, uh, there's a place where you can grab the the, the query uh, for any uh, any any table that you have inside of Power BI, and mm -hmm. you can drop it into a blank query in here, and you can then create it and manage it in the service. So instead of doing your trying to do your f refreshes all inside of Power BI, you can do them one at a time inside of the the Power BI mm -hmm. service. 
That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And I, I have I have another question if it's I, I, it's not about versioning uh, at all really, but more like the source file updating. Shoot. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So um, this was actually just like a personal project that I have. So I'm sorry if this waste time, but like I'm trying to like bring in to like, you know, make my, you know, do my budget better and actually mm -hmm. try to put that through part, bringing in all the different aspects from different banks, credit cards, whatever you have. Right. Okay. And so one of the issues I'm having is that like normally when I deal with Power BI or like Power Pivot or Excel or anything like that, I always have control of the data, you know, and I'm, but when I'm bringing it from my, for my bank site, what the happens is they have a tab of like the of the information I want on Excel. They have a tab in it. They name it different every time, and so like and it has to do with the date the date that it's downloaded by me. So like unless I want, I have to change the date always to the original one that I first did it on. For like for it to like um, update appropriately in Power BI, otherwise it like doesn't find it. But I don't want every single one to say like March 11th when here we're sitting at like April 20th, you know, so like I could upload it and then I'd have to go back and change the date again. So first I have to change it to the wrong date, then refresh it, you know, in Power BI, and then I could go back and change it to the correct date on that tab maybe. But I, I don't know. Is there a way to like get around something like that? Like, I mean... I'm redirecting it to, you know, the correct, the correctly named workbook mm -hmm. and it only yeah. has one tab in there. So I don't understand why but, I can't find it. One thing, if I might interject, one thing we do, we have a daily report that comes out. We use Power Automate to simply, when the file hits the email, it comes in via an email. When it hits the email, it saves it as that old file name and overwrites the old file name and it doesn't mess up the Power BI connection. So you've got the history of all the old files, you know, in your, in the email that comes in, but the Power Automate, all it does, it's a simple script. It just takes that when it hits this mailbox, that that file name is there, it saves it to the same directory overwriting the previous file. And um, so we, that's how we keep our um, files updated daily with the uh, new um, Excel reports that might help you. So it's just per a specific script that you have that you wrote. Yeah, and it's it's just Power Automate. It's very it's a very straightforward. They've got a you can find one. They've got the sample scripts that are there. Um, just look at save um, an email. Just look under go into Power Automate. If you got Power BI, I'm sure you've got that in the Office 365 suite or, mm -hmm. or whatever they call it and um, look at a template for saving that to the um, save an attachment. It's done, comes in as an email attachment. You could send it to yourself as an email yeah. attachment and tell it if it finds a file that comes in by that name or that, you know, comes in from a particular source, save it as um, this old file name to the same directory you know, overwriting the existing file. And it's like, it's very few steps in the script, and there's a template out there that you can use to build on. Okay, and so it changes the tab name then as well. You could you could set it. You could go in and have it do that. Um, uh, we are not changing the tab name. They're changing the tab name. What I do in that case, I actually set a table. So instead of changing the tab name, I have the script created as table. If if it's in the same location, you know the same data location and there's a YouTube video that explains exactly how to do that. A guy um, uh, was doing it, but um, just look and it opens the Excel file when it comes in, creates a table based on a data oh, yeah. range, A1 to, you know, XYZ 1000 or whatever it is. And you can, if you don't know the size it's going to be each time, just go a couple hundred rows higher. Save that range as the table name, and that way your table name never changes. The tab can okay. change, but yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Could you call it like um, current or whatever it is where, where you're, uh, you know, to, to pick the right number of rows and stuff? Is it like? Well, you have to, you about, have to, yeah, you would have yeah. to define, look at the Power Automate, and it will, okay. it will, you, 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 you know, you have to tell it a range. I haven't found, I don't know if anybody on this call knows how to, dynamically define 
the range size. Yeah, unfortunately, I haven't found well, a script that can do that. In, we, so you, in VBA, I can do it. You know, you can yeah, do it in you VBA. Can't, it, like current yeah. or whatever. I can't remember the word for it, but whatever right. cell you're in, then it'll take everything that's adjoining. Right, you know? but it won't. You can't do that in Power Automate. I've tried. Okay, I used to okay. do VBA stuff to the yeah. same way, but um, I have not found a way to make power. There's no that I know of, um, uh, and I'd love if somebody does know, <laughs> let me know. Because I just pick a range that I know it's going to yeah. be so which columns and which you know pick a large range. It's I know it's not yeah. going to exceed because it'll ignore all those. You can just tell it the then empties. when it. Yeah, the empties it'll okay. ignore those. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks for all the tips. Yeah. Uh huh. Tracy, check out um, this link in Microsoft Learn for uh, Power Automate. Okay. Tons of great classes out here. I mean, honestly, anything you're, you're looking to get started inside of, well, with anything Microsoft, Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, uh, Azure, Office, whatever. This is a great free resource for yeah. trainings and uh, you know, getting your you up and running and just familiar, like, like where do you start? Right, like yeah, yeah. I'm an, I'm all about tutorials and stuff too. So, <laughs> so I gotta tell you, the these I are learned, fantastic, huh? uh, and a lot of them are. They're so easy to go through and read. Uh, yeah, I, I was doing these on my smartphone at the gym and like in the hot tub. I'd sit and just like go through them and like, you know, it, they're they're great. They're they're fabulous. <laughs> they're a fun time. Uh, these um these sessions entertain me uh, they make me happy because uh one of the reasons is that like yeah i'm such a nerd with this stuff you know but like i do it in my free time because i think it's fun and nobody at work gets that they're like oh you know like i don't know nobody nobody gets it because i'm the only weird techie person like that you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you can be the right people i think yes. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh a new a new trick to learn oh i got you know i you know i was sick here for hours like trying to figure more stuff out and <laughs> yeah so yeah i like welcome to our world <laughs> also ch check the chat because uh, i see a lot of links from chris and fernando that are useful Okay, cool. He says, uh, I like the name from uh, Shane. Uh, Power Apps 911, is it? <laughs> yeah. Shane is great. Yeah. Oh, I yes. On, I was on Someday a session. I'll have of, somewhere near his viewership. I was on a session of Excel once, and then Bill Jellen was on it. And I, I saw him, and I could see him like in real time. I'm like, I'm like excited. I'm like, I bet you no one at work knows who Bill Jellin is, but I'm like excited. He's like like a famous person for Excel, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Tracy, your answer is that's, in that's Power Query. That's how Chris. What's that? Is your answer sorry, is in ahead. Power Query. Power, what, what did you say? I'm sorry, Power Query something? Yes. I posted the link in the chat. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Fernando also shared about the Power BI, uh, Power BI, the Microsoft 365 developer program. That is uh, pretty cool. Everyone check it out if you don't have access to all the um, 365 at your company. Uh, this is a good way for to have a sandbox to practice. You can get an E5 uh, license, I think 25 licenses for free. And there you have Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and many other things. That is a good, a great program uh, to what? practice. You didn't know about it? I did not. Where is this? It's uh, check the or Google uh, Microsoft 365 developer program. There you go. Really? Yep. And you you also can create um, uh, user uh, <laughs> practice with. It, it creates the, all the sandbox that you need to practice. So. Oh, for like development fake purposes. users, you have uh, data that you can preload. Uh, yeah. well, that's cool. I will, I'll have to check that out. It's incredible. I use that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I get yeah. it. Even for the demos, sometimes you can yeah. use this. Yeah. And I like the, the only... YouTube, the YouTube, um, you know, the YouTube helps, you know, that uh, you don't get, they give you the file that they worked with mm -hmm. so you can see how they did it, but then also you can, you know, you can. Mm -hmm. It's confirmation. Uh, so yeah, it's a and you can renew this. It's auto renewal. I, I have this for from 2018, I think, and it keeps renewing itself. So I keep having. 
Well, look how easy it is. <laughs> look, I am already up and running in here in North America. Oh. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I think you can practice Dataverse as well. I, I heard that some people had uh, some trouble trying to access Dataverse because of the company, right? And uh, that's a, a good way. I have a question about Dataverse uh, real quick. If you use a Dataverse source, I know you as a developer require a license, but if I'm going to publish out my Power BI reports with a Dataverse source, I know the users have to have a Power BI license, but do they have to have a Dataverse license too? Only if it's direct query. Okay. Not if I just connect to the data source. There is a developer program also for Power Platform. Um, it's the same as we talked, and you just merged both accounts together, and then you have Dataverse. Oh, nice. I'm sorry, say again. You did what? I posted in the chat the okay. Power Platform developer program. So you can so have a developer account for Dataverse. Right. Too. No, no, I'm talking, um, this isn't a developer. This would be for a company usage. I'm developing, this is in a company app uh, environment, and I've got a Power BI Pro, and everybody that views the reports I do has to have the Power BI Pro license just to view a report. My question is, if I use Dataverse as the data source, is that going to require an additional license for the viewers beyond, I know I would have to have additional license to be able to use it. Well, depending on my, e, I've got the EB5, whatever. But do the viewers also have to have an additional license? No, they don't okay. need that, uh, a license for Power Apps. They just need license to view the report in Power BI. Now, so if you have someone using a Power App need, that's loading? You don't need, the, as a developer, you need the license for Power Platform for Dataverse to connect to, to that source. Right, I need it to connect, correct, but I'm talking about the viewers, the day exactly also. Exactly, I, I told you, no, they don't no. need a license. Okay, okay. Okay, that's good to know. Awesome. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to try the, the, the data mart. Um, maybe I can do that through the developer account because my company's turned off the, at the tenant level, the data mart, so I, Nobody can try them right now. Until they put some more enterprise level governance control around that, it's turned off for now. Yep, we have the same restrictions. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that'll change. All right, everybody, uh, it is getting late for me. I have got to push on. I hope I, I was able to answer everyone's questions. I hope you guys found this useful. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for taking time to to meet with me and hang out with me. This is my favorite. One of my favorite things to talk about is data and this stuff. Uh, I don't know if it shows or comes through when I talk about these things, but I absolutely love it. Thank you guys for 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 being there to talk with me about these things. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, Cecilia, for hosting it. Yeah, thanks, Chris.